Chick-fil-A has finally bent the knee to the left-wing outrage mob. Just weeks after the first UK-based location shut down due to protests, and weeks before that, when the first Canadian store faced mass protest, Chick-fil-A has announced they are dropping donations to Christian charities after LGBT plus protests. The Chick-fil-A Foundation will no longer donate to the Salvation Army and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and they have donated millions to those organizations. Of all of the companies or groups or whatever that I thought would never bend the knee, Chick-fil-A, they did. And this highlights a very serious problem for conservatives in this country. The left uses tactics they are unwilling to use, and thus even conservative institutions will bend the knee. Let me make something clear. The left views their ideology religiously. It, it, it is their religion. You have people like Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay uh, being, I, I believe, professors or associate professors, whatever you want to call them, calling it a non-theistic religion, whereas conservatives separate their politics from their religion. But I'll tell you what, conservatives, you've got a big problem if you won't even defend your religious values outside of the company you're, 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 you're running. If the left is willing to put everything, their ideology and politics behind everything, and even go out and protest nonstop, and you won't, you're going to keep losing these fights. Bill Barr made this statement recently, and we'll get into this. He talks about the, the disadvantage conservatives have. But I will make one other point. Before we get into this, I don't want to say that Republicans are just losers who can't win a single fight. No, they won probably one of the most important fights of this generation, the election of Donald Trump. And I think there are a lot of losers on the Republican side, and they've bowed out. They don't want to be involved anymore. But there are new people emerging who are pushing back. Think about these protests, the outrage, the anger that seems to make very little sense. You know, they're, they're, they're a chicken shop. Don't eat there. Don't support them. But they got it shut down anyway. They got a store shut down, and now Chick-fil-A is giving up. Think about the attitude of Donald Trump. He was boorish, oafish, aggressive, but maybe that's exactly what Trump supporters wanted because that's exactly what this is. Now, I'll say this. I want to get into a bunch of examples and talk about the shift affecting conservatives, this ongoing fight, and how there they are. There is a battle. It's, it's give and take a little bit. But it seems like the, the, the attitude that Donald Trump has that I've criticized is the exact same attitude from the left that I'm very critical of as well. Uh, critical of as well. The difference being Republicans, conservatives, moderates, the people who voted for Trump elected someone to speak for them, whereas the left has organizations that go out in mass protest and shut things down. But let's get into this. And before we get started, I will say a couple things. I think the Republicans on the right have a major disadvantage unless they do something and make some changes because Trump is under fire nonstop over the impeachment inquiry. They're doing everything in their power to shut him down. And we can see they're more aggressive. The Republicans are going to need more than just Donald Trump. But let's read the story. Before we do, the other thing I'll say is go to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But of course, the best thing you can do, share this video if you think what I'm saying matters or that my opinions make sense, or even if you disagree and want to make fun of me, share the video. You know, just, it helps unless you don't want to help me, whatever. So it's a very short story from CNBC. They say U.S. fast food chain Chick-fil-A said on Monday it had stopped funding two Christian organizations, including the Salvation Army, having come, un come under fire in recent weeks from LGBT plus campaigners. The fast food chain's charitable arm, Chick-fil-A Foundation, has donated millions of dollars to the Salvation Army and to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which opposes same-sex marriage. Chick-fil-A on Monday said it no longer funded the organizations. We made multi-year commitments to both organizations, and we fulfilled those obligations in 2018. A spokeswoman for Chick-fil-A told the Thomson Reuters Foundation, adding the company would focus its giving on education, homelessness, and hunger. Neither the Salvation Army nor the Fellowship of Christian Athletes were available to comment immediately. Now, I'm sure some will say it has nothing to do with the protests. They just fulfilled their donations. But no, I think it's fair to say it had something at least to do with the protests. And whether it did or didn't, I think there's a more important point to be made. Take a look at what's going on. At the same time as this, you have Chick-fil-A being told to, to stop making those donations because of outrage. Meanwhile, Sprite publishes a pro-LGBT commercial. There is right-wing outrage, as you can see. But what happens? Nothing. Sprite carries on as if nothing happened. The right didn't go out in mass protest, didn't film a bunch of, you know, destruction of Sprite cans. And even when they did it over Nike, I believe it was Nike gear and Colin Kaepernick, it resulted in, in nothing. Now, I can't tell you exactly why that is, but I can say you've got a major cultural disadvantage, and it could be because of media institutions. In turn, however, it's not all bad for the right. 
Because but before we move on, I do want to highlight an important point. The election of Donald Trump was that counteroffensive. For the longest time, we've seen the growing culture war between video games, comics, poli- you know, movies, the injection of politics. People said they would have Donald Trump be their point man. Instead of going out themselves and waving signs, some do, they had Donald Trump be that aggressive personality to push back. And in turn, Planned Parenthood withdrew from the Title X program over Trump abortion rule. So there has been some victory from the right, but it's very different. In the end, though, with Trump facing impeachment and with the left continuing their ongoing campaigns and protests and in many instances, duplicitous tactics, I think you have a major disadvantage for the right. And you know what? It's not just my opinion. Let's throw it to A.G. Bill Barr. He explains why conservatives are at a fundamental disadvantage to leftists. The Daily Wire says Attorney General William Barr highlighted on Friday during the Federalist Society's 2019 National Lawyers Convention in D.C. the reason why conservatives are at a fundamental disadvantage when it comes to fighting the political left. This highlights a basic disadvantage that conservatives have always had in contesting the political issues of the day. It was adverted to by the old, uh, curmudgeonly federalist Fisher Ames in an essay during the early years of the Republic, Barr said. In any age, the so-called progressives treat politics as their religion. Their holy mission is to use the coercive power of the state to remake man and society in their own image. According to an abstract ideal of perfection, whatever means they use are therefore justified because by definition, they are virtuous people pursuing a deific end. They are willing to use any means necessary to gain momentary advantage in achieving their end, regardless of collateral consequences and the systemic implications. They never ask whether the actions they take could be justified as a general rule of conduct, equally applicable to all sides. Conservatives, on the other hand, do not seek an earthly paradise. We are interested in preserving over the long run the proper balance of freedom and order necessary for healthy development of natural civil society and individual human flourishing, Barr continued. This means that we naturally test the the, uh, propriety and wisdom of action under a rule of law standard. The essence of this standard is to ask what the overall impact on society over the long run is, if the, uh, over the long run, if the action we are taking or principle we are applying in a given circumstance was universalized, that is, would it be good for society over the long haul if this was done in all like circumstances. They say in a section of his prepared remarks, which he skipped over, Barr added, for these reasons, conservatives tend to have more scruple over their political tactics and rarely feel that the end justify the means. And this is as it should be. But there is no getting around the fact that this puts conservatives at a disadvantage when facing progressives wholly far, especially when doing so under the weight of a hyper-partisan media. And Bill Barr basically just explained everything I'm going to dive, uh, dive into and what I was talking about. The left does not separate their politics from their religion. It's one and the same. Conservatives do. To the extent that Chick-fil-A would abandon supporting charities that held their religious values because they do separate them, because they see the difference between the political and the religious. And they, I, can, I can respect that to a degree, but I can also point out it's going to result in their potential downfall. Now, for one thing, This is a culture war. It's a back and forth. Like I mentioned, Trump has some victories. The right has their victory in electing Trump and taking their their, their action through government. But the left continues doing what it's going to do. In the end, the big problem you have is that regular people do not want to engage. If conservatives are standing there with a smile on their face and a beer in their hand, yeah, it's easy for a regular person to say, not interested, buddy. But what about when someone shows up screeching in your face and attacking you? Well, you're probably going to bend the knee. The way I explain it is, you know, why is social media biased against conservatives? It's actually really, really simple. Some some might allege there's a grand conspiracy or that the people at the top know they're politically biased and are trying to help certain people win. And that may be true to an extent, like there are people at Google and Twitter, we know they're biased, but it's actually really simple. We'll say um, Sargon of Akkad, I love using him, him as an example. He's the liberalist, the classical liberal YouTuber anti-feminist. Is he ever going to lead a group of liberalists to Twitter HQ with crowbars and baseball bats demanding the end of censorship? Of course not. Of course not. And Twitter knows this. So they don't care. They have nothing to lose. They have no risk by saying go away. What about Antifa? Antifa absolutely would show up 
and cause damage, and they have in the past. And that's why universities, and that's why these, these platforms, they, they play the game exactly like they do, because they're scared of the moral outrage mob. Let me show you an example of how this manifests. We have a recent story. Leftists taunt conservative students. This is from Campus Reform. They say two conservative students from Binghamton University in New York faced a crowd of protesters Wednesday as they tried to promote their club. One student told Campus Reform that she's willing to press charges. A New York State Assemblyman has sent a letter to the school's president. It doesn't matter, though. The school can't do anything about it. These outrage mobs just form. Look at, look at this woman's face. Look at this picture. This is a viral video where this woman was screeching at another young woman. And I can tell you that these people have no idea what's going on. That's what's truly scary about the leftist outrage mob. You could sit down and have a conversation with these conservatives who are flyering, just a couple people with some flyers, and they will tell you what they believe and you can argue. But we saw it in Berkeley. One of these guys doing this got punched in the face. And now we can see it here at the university. This is cultish behavior. A group of people emerge. They don't care what's going on. They care about the tribe. And if the tribe says so, they do it. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think this school is going to do right by these students? No, they're not going to do anything because they know that the conservatives will never do anything in return. What's the worst case scenario? In 2020, conservatives might go vote. Donald Trump might win again. Well, they already expect it's going to happen. And what is Trump going to do to a university? Trump's tweeted about it, but he can only do so much. So while there are victories on the right in voting, they will lose culturally because they don't engage in producing content and they don't go out and protest. And I got to admit, for the most part, while there are certainly crazies on the right, and a lot of them, there's just way more aggressive, active, angry leftists who show up and make that face to you and threaten you and potentially break the law. Now, this woman is highlights, highlighted specifically in the story because she was really, really aggressive and screaming in people's faces. But you know for a fact they have no idea what's going on. How can the right go up against that and win? The sad reality is I think in the long run they can't. And that's why we see so much of culture bend the knee to the left. I'll tell you this, man, even Chick-fil-A. Wow. I, I'm surprised by that. Now, I will also mention every time I do a video where I mention Chick-fil-A, it makes me really want to go. It's, it's good food, man. And I guess, I guess now there's no controversy in me saying I'm going to go enjoy a nice chicken sandwich with some Chick-fil-A sauce on it because they've, they've given in. They've bent the knee to the left. Who, who, who does the right have if they can't even stand up? Now, there are some, this is, this is the big point I want to get to. There are new people entering the Republican Party on the side of Trump or just not really, but still supporting that side of the, uh, of the political debate for a variety of reasons. For one, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be as offensive as possible. While, while I think the Democrats today are the, the cringiest group of lunatics, I think old, the older Republicans before, you know, this, this change in the party, they're losers, they're losers. I know they had their victories. I know there's been back and forth. But man, so many of these people have bowed out running with their tail between their legs, terrified. And now that the culture war is ramping up, we're seeing new voices emerge and people who are refusing to back down. We're seeing a group of liberal minded individuals engaging with conservatives and pushing back. And this is getting, you know, kind of crazy. Let me give you one more example before I get into one of the possible best things the conservatives, there, there's, there's something happening that may actually save the conservatives. But before we do that, let me show you something. Check this out. From GQ, this is in August. Tucker Carlson's show has bled 70 advertisers in less than a year. From August 20th. Tucker Carlson's not that offensive. He's not particularly more offensive than other people on TV. He's a little bombastic, but he's nowhere near that bad. He's not the worst person on Fox News. So why did he lose 70 advertisers? Because the left uses any means necessary to win. Scorched earth, no holds barred, whatever they can do to win. And like I said, these advertisers don't care if conservatives grumble on the internet. They're going to do nothing. The left is scary. They get violent. But take a look at this. What about Rachel Maddow? Here's a story from Crystal Ball back in July. Former MSNBC host tears into network following Mueller testimony, saying that some people drank a little bit too much of that Robert Mueller Kool-Aid. I don't know if that's an offensive way to describe it, but you get the point. Rachel Maddow went off the rails with conspiracy insanity and faced no repercussions for this. She continues to this day, not a problem, nothing. 
You know, you know what? I can't tell you how or what Republicans should or shouldn't be doing. I have no idea, but I can tell you this. Just electing Donald Trump will not solve any of these cultural problems. We've seen stuff from, say, Jack Posobiec. He's making a comic book. And one of the things he's brought up is that conservatives don't engage in creating culture. Well, I'll add to that. They don't do journalism either. It's, I'm sorry, it's a fact. There are a few great outlets that do real journalism that are conservative, but we know for a fact that the overwhelming majority of media being produced, as well as heavily funded, is left wing. And that means conservatives are arguing from the left wing narrative. So you might resist this and say that's wrong, but you're not producing the facts. They are. And so those facts are being framed in a way that benefit them. And they'll try and argue framing facts, but facts are facts. Listen, man, it's a very, very simple uh, 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 analogy or, or explanation that I give to people. And you may be familiar with it. The dihydrogen monoxide hoax. If you're not familiar, you basically say something like, did you know that hydric acid will kill you if you inhale it? Shouldn't we ban this dangerous chemical? It's corrosive. It eats through metal. We find it in the plumbing of, of our big cities and people get scared. Everything I said there is true, but the fact is that hydric acid is water. So when you frame it in a certain way, you can shock and scare people. And if conservatives don't engage in that behavior, they're going to lose. And Chick-fil-A will eventually give up knowing no one's got their back, or at least the people who got their back aren't willing to use the same tactics for better or for worse. I don't think the left's tactics are a good thing, but I can't tell you how you win. And this is the disadvantage faced by conservatives that Bill Barr's talking about. Now, how about a real political example? Is this a picture of Elise Stefanik flipping the bird in an impeachment inquiry? Elise Stefanik got Marie Yovanovitch, a witness, star witness for the Democrats in the impeachment inquiry, to admit she provided false testimony earlier in the day. Earlier in the day, she said no one in the previous administration had brought up the issue of Hunter Biden. Stefanik then questioned her on previous testimony, saying you said you were specifically questioned in prep by the Obama administration about Hunter Biden. And Marie Yovanovitch said, that's correct. And that was a bombshell. That was probably only, only one of the real bombshells that Yovanovitch provided false testimony and now presumably twice was another reporting. The response from the left when Elise Stefanik pulled this maneuver was to try and do everything in their power by any means necessary to destroy her. And now her opponent in her district has hundreds of thousands of followers and has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. But all that's fine. If someone's going to raise money, fine, they deserve to. But that's not what I'm talking about. The left produced a photoshopped image of Elise Stefanik flicking off the camera. This is CGI. This individual tweeted, Stefanik posted, posed for this picture as Ambassador Yovanovitch was getting a loud standing ovation after giving testimony yesterday. And why 21 deserves better than this childish loser. This guy deleted this, apologized profusely, and notified everyone of the mistake. But somebody produced a fake image to trick people. Why? because Stefanik provided for the right. She came through with an amazing question and people were shocked. The story that Yovanovitch provided false testimony could shake the, the impeachment inquiry to its core, at least for the time being. So in response, instead of being honest and telling the truth, the left did this, a fake image to discredit and smear the politician who proved, the, who, who, who hurt the credibility of their star witness. These are the tactics they're willing to engage in. And if the right isn't willing to, bless them, I respect that wholeheartedly. These are horrifying things to do. And they do it to me and they do it to everybody. They take things I say out of context and they try and smear to hurt me and my business. For the most part, I'm not partisan or bombastic enough to get their focus, but they've tried a month long plus campaign to put conspiracy theorists in my Wikipedia page, which is absurd because I don't even believe a lot of the <laughs> reporting from the New York Times. I don't believe anything. If you, can, if you can call me anything, you can say I'm just a general skeptic. But they tried and they failed and they'll do it to you and they'll do it to everyone else if you oppose them because they believe in taking, getting, getting what they want by any means necessary, even if it means destroying everything around them. But you know what? There may be some light at the end of the tunnel for conservatives because of these scorched earth policies. Those of the left that had principle have fled. Check out this tweet from Eric Weinstein. He is the man who coined the phrase intellectual dark web. And this thread may provide, you know what? These tactics used by the left may ultimately be their downfall. And this, it, it may be that through a, a, a war of attrition, conservatives win out by maintaining their dignity, their integrity, and their principles. Eric Weinstein tweeted, invited on a conservative podcast today, we celebrated punk rock as I politely told them Trump was obviously manifestly unfit for office. 
and I view their parent org as a propaganda arm of the Republican Party. They couldn't have been more decent to me. This is how they may win. Yup. <laughs> After everything I just said, Chick-fil-A bending the knee, the Republicans, conservatives might actually win by just maintaining their integrity. Now I know after everything I've probably told you, you might, be sh you, might, you might think, no way. I mean, with the fake photos and the people willing to believe this. But let me read on. Weinstein said, my eyes are open. This isn't my team. But when normal souls who think normal thoughts have to go over to their competitor's house to have civil constructive discussion because their own home often hurls poop at any who won't tow an incoherent party line, loss has to be budgeted. Don't get sold the narrative that Trump now owns all U.S. conservatism. He does own a good chunk of it. But there's also a new strain of tolerant conservatism, conservatism that's very liberal, relentlessly civil, anti-inequality, pro-logic, pro-gay, pro-weed, pro-free speech and multicultural. I saw a video of Charlie Kirk with another man, and I, for, I forgive me for not remembering your, your name, if you, but he said that people were booing because he mentioned something about supporting LGBT conservatives. And he said, Jesus traveled with the sinners and everybody, and he respected and loved everyone. And that's, that's the point. Kanye West was, was rapping about strippers, and now he's preaching the word of the Lord. You might actually win by being good people in the end, by rejecting the, this, this hate, that, that face of that woman at that college campus screeching and screaming in the ears of people, pure hatred. You might actually win by waving people over and saying, we won't do that. Weinstein ends by saying, what's causing this? I don't know. But one partial explanation is that many normal adults made to feel like pariahs are leaving the Democratic Party and simply taking their liberal values across the street. It's like visiting a little Italy, Koreatown, or other diaspora community. In the end, the sheer insanity of leftist, leftist outrage is pushing liberals away, and the conservatives with open arms accepting them are creating a new, different kind of normal majority, I would say. While there are many people on the left who are terrified of the flames and will do whatever the outrage mob says, there are people like me, like Eric Weinstein, like Dave Rubin, people who say, I'm not, I'm not playing, dude. While we may not agree politically, what we, what we agree on principally is more important. So this is the big thing. A lot of what's happening in the culture war in politics has nothing to do with policy, has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with, I guess, integrity and principles. Do I believe in free speech? Of course I do. And freedom and equality. And I, and I detest hate speech. But I believe freedom comes first because we cannot allow massive, unaccountable systems to control everything. But that's what the leftist outrage mob is. So I'm sad to see Chick-fil-A give in. I am anything but a religious person. I will say this. I believe in God. I have my own kind of religion. I really, I, I, I would say I, I absolutely reject traditional theism and, you know, the Bible and all these religious things. But I have, I have beliefs that are, 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 are somewhat overlapping. I wouldn't call it spirituality. No, I actually do think there is a God and it's complicated, but I am not, 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 not ever going to be a fan. I grew up Catholic and I, I will not. I just do not see it. But you know what? I have tremendous respect for, for Kanye West to speak out for what he believes in, to preach and to use his position in spite of the outrage mob. And that's what I think unites us. While I disagree with you, the moral authoritarianism is terrifying and thus an agnostic-ish individual like me who leans left politically is now principally aligned with moderates and conservatives. The left is pushing these people away. So in the end, they may, they, they may end up losing due to attrition. They've gone too hard. They're attacking a chicken restaurant. I don't care if Chick-fil-A wants to make donations to organizations. I believe we take it to the streets. We, we, we take it to the voting, to, to, to the voting booth. If Chick-fil-A wants to donate to the Salvation Army, I've been to the Salvation Army. I've donated to them too. We used to give clothes. They do the thrift store, right? What is this? They've gone nuts. This might be the saving grace of the right. I don't know what that means for liberals and people like me in the long run. And I believe that there may come a time that people like me or Eric Weinstein and even Ruben to an extent may find ourselves pushing back on a right-wing majority who does become more moralistic. But who knows? For the time being, I think the screeching outrage cannot survive when you are bleeding out your own side. It is more, you know, I'll, I'll end with this. While Chick-fil-A may have caved, while other organizations may have caved, while the right may take some ground with getting Donald Trump, I ask myself, why is it that the Axios study I, I cited the other day, that Democrats are made angry by nearly everything they read and 74% or so are made angry by the news. Why is it that on the right, everybody's laughing? 
Why is it that, you know, Freedom Tunes, for instance, can make fun and everyone can laugh and that people can post memes and that you have Flecka's talks, for instance, where he goes around and talks to people and he's kind of more jovial and like asking questions, not being super angry about it. I think that's where we end. Those of us are having a good time and a laugh and it's much more comfortable. And this is how they win. To quote Eric Weinstein, this is how they may win. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews at 6 p.m. And I will see you all then.